Hey, what's up? This is Chris Gardner, and I'm going to help you through the steps of making pl floor plans for real estate. So a few of the things we're going to go over specifically are uh, why bother offering floor plans, the equipment you need for it, including the software, as well as on-site tips, and then some steps you can take beyond floor plans. So uh, if you're on YouTube, check out the description below for links to jump forward. So why offer floor plans in the first place? Number one, floor plans are in demand and the demand is only increasing among real estate agents. You're rounding out your offering to your client and becoming more valuable in that way. You're saving on their schedules because instead of hiring two people, two separate people, they can now just go to you. It's also good for other lines of work outside of real estate. It's relatively inexpensive to get started as far as equipment goes. So equipment you'll need to get all this done something to bring it to and from each property, craft paper and clipboard, mechanical pencil, your laser measuring device, backup batteries, a good eraser, your computer, and that's it. And now let's go over some on-site tips that will help you when measuring. So the first most important thing is get the longest measurements you can. Like if you have a long sight line in the house, definitely pull that measurement on top of whatever else you normally would. And if you look at this, this diagram, it shows three color lines, which you could consider measurements. Uh, you know, you get the blue one because that's the longest one you'll see in that direction. And then you might only want to get the green, but just get the red one in case. These redundant measurements are what's going to help you be accurate later when it comes to getting it on the computer and being sure of what you measured. Write the address and the floor on each piece of paper you make for a property because if they get mixed up you don't want to be guessing which one is which or trying to remember the floor plan from memory or, or referencing photos or anything like that so just label them and date them uh, another useful thing is align the corners of your paper so if the you know north side of the house is on the top of your page keep it that way on all your pages in the case of you know multiple floors or let's say a guest house that you're measuring as well something like that just keep it all aligned another tip is uh you know go through the house and sketch it all on paper first and then do another pass through the house filling in all the measurements i find that to be faster than trying to measure and sketch as i go so now let's go over the software and a uh, full walkthrough of how it works. The software I like to use is called Sweet Home 3D. It's free and I think it's open source. Now it's meant for 3D stuff, but we're really only gonna use five main features. Rooms, walls, polylines, dimensions, and text. One of the other great things about this software is there's a huge library of uh, you know, user contributed assets like the floor planning items I use, which you'll also want to download. Okay, so now we're just gonna basically walk through uh, a floor plan, or at least the start of one, like I'd normally do. So I'm gonna grab the room measurements because that lets me draw, you know, basically polygons, in this case squares, which every room is. I know I'm gonna have, you know, two of the same dimensions for each. So I drag them out and you'll see there's a little counter that goes up. Uh, showing you how long the line is that you've just drawn. So these will correspond to measurements on your paper. You'll see it's also giving us uh, square footage, which is not important right now. We're actually gonna get rid of these boxes later. They just help us understand how big the rooms are and then from that we can place our walls. So because when we're measuring a floor plan, we're actually measuring the open space and not the walls. That's why I am drawing these open space boxes instead of the walls. Uh, I find, you know, I did it kind of the other way, but this is just a little more intuitive and I find it works faster and it should be more accurate as well. So right now I'm just kind of taking boxes from my sketched paper and filling them in. So in this one I'm about to make an L shape and that's because this room was irregularly shaped. So I broke it up into two boxes that I draw with this rooms and uh, that's about it. You know, certain rooms are gonna become more complicated. Like this is fairly straightforward as far as something that isn't a straight box, but you can essentially make any shape of room doing this kind of box approach as long as you are picking two dimensions that 
make a real open space in the house, if that makes any sense. So we'll probably just skip forward a little bit here and you know, you don't need to see me draw each and every one of these. I'm a little slow because I'm kind of looking at the paper as I go. Okay, and now I'm just going to grab the cursor and just kind of shift these boxes a little bit with the arrow keys left and right. And that just kind of, you know, I can kind of eye up the placement. When you're doing a full house, uh, not like I'm doing here, you'll notice things just fall into place and everything will make sense in the actual arrangement. And things will just look weird when uh, you don't have the proper scaled rooms or spaces. So now I'm just grabbing the walls and dropping them into the open spaces between the rooms that we have here. And you know, this is approximately 450 square foot area. Most houses I measure are, are you know, starting at 2000 and I think I've done uh, 8,000 one time, which was quite labor intensive, but um, I just want to keep this tutorial fast. So, we have our walls in and now we're going to select all the rooms that we just created by holding shift and clicking or you know whatever if you're on Apple or if you're on Windows you'll have different ones but just the regular select multiple works here. So now that we have more or less our uh, wall layout I can I usually start by dragging the doorways in because they're kind of the first First thing, and they need you know some uh, resizing occasionally, and also rotating. In this case, all the swings, the door swings, are going to be going the wrong way, but it's pretty straightforward to get them the right way. I just uh, right-click and enable or mirrored proportions or mirrored shape, and that'll just flip it around. In the case of doors, which need to be the proper rotation, or should be the proper rotation, anyways, in your floor plans. So when I've got most of the floor plan done, for the invoicing purposes, I'll create one more room and that's just to give me the overall square footage, which you see in this case is 425. And that's what I use for my billing purposes because I do, you know, a cost per thousand square feet. So with that kind of pricing model, you know, accuracy is quite important to me and my clients. Uh, if you were going on something that was more you know, let's say up to 2,000 square feet gets this amount and so on, then it may not be important to you, but uh, that's why I do that. And then I just grab kind of the, uh, the text button and I'll start filling in rooms. You can set your default font if you want something that looks a little more architecty, you know, kind of floor plan, handwritten design type thing. I like something that's quite clear and uh, very easy to read, especially since some of these floor plans when printed on paper get get fairly small so I want everything to be very simple and clear for the information they are going to be looking for. So and now we get to the user contributed assets which are things like this bed. So this is mainly a 3D software but we use it solely or at least in my case I use it solely for the 2D you know design of having a scale and grid lines and all that. So it didn't actually come with all these things like beds and uh, you know chairs and whatever else you see, showers, all that. You have to get that from the community, but there's so much out there that if you did want to start using this for 3D or anything like that, there's, there's all sorts of you know things you can download that will help enrich your designs. So I stick to the basic ones. I like to show where beds are, bathrooms, any, any fixture really, like anything that's part of the house when they move in, I'm gonna show and then beds and couches just because it gives uh, a helpful idea to the scale of a room. So yeah. Now let's say that you have a complex room and in this case we had a closet coming out. I didn't wanna draw an extra box for that so instead I got the dimensions measuring tool and having measured the opening from the doorway to the closet I know that this is where that wall belongs and so there we go we fill it in that closet and you can apply that to any type of um, any type of random shape you need to fill into any any room 
So in the case of, let's say, this closet with French doors, I usually end up bringing in two doors and then just keeping them together. And here's where, where you'll see that mirrored shape checkbox, and that's all we do. And so now we have two doors that face each other, and that's about it. Underneath each of the, uh, the room names, I'll typically put in the dimensions in, you know, whether you do feet and inches or meters is going to depend on your client's preferences. Um, so, you know, that's just one way to do it. Some, some people use the dimensions and will pull it along the outside. I just feel like for a marketing floor plan, I want it to look kind of like what you'd see in uh, a condo or a new build package that you get from a developer. So it's, it's usually simplified and clean and it's not meant to look technical because not everyone really knows their way around floor plans. So, you know, try and make it something that is really just the information they need to see and present it in a nice clean way that, that ensures they see everything you want them to. So, you know, in this case, I just put the stairs right there, but I'll always, you know, include a, a direction and an arrow for every stairwell in a property and sometimes you know I'll give it a, a little boost of color I don't really use a lot of color on the floor plans just because of that simple thing but when it comes to stairs I feel like that's something you could you could put put in red or whatnot then after that we are getting ready to export we're going to go export as SVG find the folder you want to save it in give it your name and then we are going to bring it into our other software so now we get into finishing your product. So we have a finished floor plan. I showed you the exporting steps earlier, and then you just basically want to open it up into any software you can that will let you finish it with titles and you know some information, maybe a disclaimer if you need to put it, your own branding uh, and all that. Okay, so you got the basics down, now what? So 2D single color is kind of just the beginning of all, all of what you can do with this basic understanding, whether you get into you know, 3D or making uh, interactive home models, which can be a really powerful way for someone to view a property. Like there's lots of options out there. So this is just meant to help you get started. I tried to make it pretty thorough, but at the same time pretty fast. So if you feel like I left something out, definitely let me know. I'll address it in either a second video, maybe just in the comments for you right away. And yeah, thanks for watching and good luck with everything you're doing for your clients.